Hello and welcome back to the show. This is Everything Under the Sun. My name is Ty, and yeah, thanks for joining me. I uh, hope you all have had a great weekend. It's been kind of crazy out there. I know maybe it's a little bit difficult to enjoy at the moment. I have a friend that's in New York City that spoke about how he was out protesting with some individuals, and I guess like the police barricaded them, kind of like flocked them into like a certain space and like kept them from going home during curfew, blocked the subway stations and things like that. And then started letting them out around like 7.55 or like opening up the barricade at like 7.55 p.m. But were like beating people as they were trying to leave with their batons and stuff. So it's kind of crazy just hearing that. And apparently like a lot of them got arrested. Just, you know, it was a peaceful protest. Like there were no um, looting or anything happening. It was just people protesting and yeah about he said that like 75 percent of them got arrested whereas some of them got away but yeah just crazy stuff happening so hope you all are staying safe and you know obviously doing what's right for you and yeah I mean there's just there's just so much going around I've actually been taking a little hiatus from social media recently and you know I mean just because there's so much perpetuation of just negativity on there and I mean there's a point where it's like you're up to date with what's going on in the world and then like there's a point when it's just excessive you know and it's just putting you in this very dark mood or in this like really aggravated state or this this state of being that you don't really want to be in and I think that's kind of when you should remove yourself or I mean I, I don't want to say shoulds and shouldn'ts because you know move as you as you please but for me that's just kind of when I notice it where it's like okay I'm I I'm up to date with the news, I'm up to date with like what's going on, and anything further, any kind of further investigation is going to just cause me to be upset, and that's not where I want to be, so I want to be knowledgeable, I want to be competent of everything that's going on, but I also don't want that to start to consume my life to where I'm so upset that I can't do anything about it, I can't be proactive in, in trying to make the change that I want to see, so... Hope that all of you are safe and, you know, take some time from social media if that's something that you realize is causing you distress as you, you know, manage through these these few weeks of this crazy year of 2020 that's, I mean, it's just been absolutely wild so far. So try to stay safe, try to do what's best for you, make sure you get in that self-care because that's so necessary, I mean, we can't make any change. We can't help anyone if we ourselves are drowning in sadness or misery or anger or anything. So recognize that and, and do the best for yourself to maintain that. And and yeah, what, what I've done is kind of distance myself from social media and, and start trying to do the things that I enjoy more in my life. Like yesterday, I went out to the river. It was my first river day. And like I said, I... I'm fortunate enough to live in an area where it's like a very low population and very high amount of just natural beauty around. So there's mountains, there are rivers, there's the ocean, there are forests and trails and things that are just really amazing to do. So yesterday I did my first river trip and that was really great. It was nice and warm. I got some time to reflect. There was virtually no one in sight. I mean, there were a lot of cars, but like the river is so big that, you know, like you can find a spot and kind of isolate yourself and I did that more or less like I mean there could have been spots where I was like 10 to 20 feet from someone and that would have been fine but I think I just wanted some time to reflect for myself and it was really good to do that so that was nice it was a good river day <laughs> a little chilly but it wasn't too bad the water was chilly not the not the air outside but yeah that was good another thing too I started watching um well, I guess I may have mentioned this in the last episode but probably not this show called Space Force, and I'm sure some of you have heard of it if you have Netflix, and it's with Steve Carell. I mean, he's he's one of my... I, I like him as an actor, and I know some people are kind of, like, not really a fan of his for, I mean, whatever reasons, but I think that, like, deadpan comedy is, like, kind of my thing. You know, I love, like, that kind of situational comedy, and I think that Steve Carell is so perfect when it comes to that, like, just... I feel like it's just like kind of natural comedy and I, I, I don't know I feel like kind of I feel weird when it comes to things in a comedic nature just because I feel like it's kind of forced in some ways where it's like if you if you're like a stand-up comic like that that's your intention to make people laugh 
So I guess I kind of overanalyze it and I'm like, you know, is this, is this factual? You know, like I'm just like overanalyzing everything with it. I love stand-up comedy, but that's just kind of like one of my weird things with it where it's like, you know, it's going to make me laugh. And, you know, I try not to think about like those nuances of like how embellished the story is just to make it funnier. But, you know, I think that's like the best thing about comedy is that like sometimes you can twist and turn it to make it something that's really amazing. And so I, I respect that. But yeah, in in Space Force, you know, I mean, Steve Crow, a lot of people know him from The Office and um, what's that called? Anchorman. And, you know, I thought he was hilarious in Anchorman as well. But yeah, Space Force, it's it's a good show. I wouldn't say that it's like, ha ha funny, although there was a scene in the last episode I watched that <laughs> that legitimately made me laugh. Like, I, I don't know if you, it like caught me off guard how, how funny it was. And I don't know if you like, you know what laugh I'm talking about, where it's like, you kind of like, you laugh through your nose. So it sounds like you're like, blowing your nose. And it's like, but you're not, I don't know, I don't know, I can't really, like, I can't really explain it, but, like, it, it caught me off guard to where, like, I was, like, taking a drink, and, like, yeah, it just started, started happening, and it's, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a good show, I think it's an entertaining show, so if you want something to watch to kind of, again, get your mind off of some things, it's definitely something that is entertaining, and you might find some laughter in it, and I think that it's just one of those great shows that, you know, you can kind of just put on and back away from some things, and, I don't know. I, I love like entertainment for that way. I feel like I just yelled in the microphone, but <laughs> I love entertainment for that way where it's like, I don't necessarily like to even be consumed too much with Netflix. Like I, I don't watch any television until I'm about to eat dinner or something, which I mean, some people don't even say it's the best thing, but I don't have a family that I have to sit down with to eat family dinners with. So I eat dinner and I watch Netflix and that's perfectly fine with me, but I only, I only get like an hour or two of watching any type of like media type of thing and I do find it like to be enjoyable though for that reason of being able to unwind and get away and kind of get your mind off of things because media is definitely a good way of distracting you so it's like what kind of distractions are we putting into our minds and into our lives as we kind of go forward and like I was saying about social media how all that negative stuff is you know it's putting you at that, that vibration of negativity so you know change it up switch up the media that you're looking at and and maybe get a little laugh out of something. So Space Force is my weekly recommendation of a Netflix show that you could check out if you want to, if you haven't already. But some people are saying it's not funny. I mean, it's not necessarily funny. Like I said, like, haha, funny. But I think it's entertaining and it has comedic moments where it's like I can smile or laugh inside of my head. Like, oh, yeah, that was that was humorous. But anyway, there was, there was something that I... I keep yelling into this microphone. There was something that I picked up from the last episode, I, speaking of the topic today, which is self-improvement slash development, there was, I, I downloaded an app called Word of the Day, and I stopped the notifications from coming to my phone because they were getting annoying, but anyway, the point was to learn a new word every day, and although I've been slacking on that, this, in Space Force, there was a word that I didn't even know existed, which is aphantasia, which is the inability to voluntarily visualize mental imagery, so essentially, like, an inability to actually like imagine something like just by yourself. So I say, you know, think about a pink elephant and some people can just like pop up with the pink elephant in their head, whether it's like cartoonish or like more realistic, whatever it is, you can create that imagery in your head. Apparently aphantasia individuals that have this, they can't do that. It's like, it's, it's not something that they can visual like voluntarily do. So I'm not really sure about that. Um, inability to voluntarily visualize mental imagery so I, I don't I don't get it like maybe involuntarily like images that I feel like that'd be kind of crazy too but anyway so that's a new word if any of you are interested in the word for the day aphantasia that is uh again the inability to voluntarily visualize mental imagery so space force you can learn some new things you can laugh a little bit you can get your mind off of things and yeah that's kind of uh all I got there so anyway box of topics here for next week again like i said this week is self-improvement slash development so i'm just gonna figure out what's gonna be next week and check it out you know it's kind of crazy because sometimes i i start doing this podcast like this morning i woke up and i didn't want to do anything and somehow i think when i start working on this podcast and i start actually recording i like i feel fine and i'm like you know i think 
I think this is good. <laughs> and I don't know, I feel better. So maybe that's a sign. That I think we should always take signs as to the things that we're feeling in life. If we are feeling really upset and then something brings us joy, be like, all right, this is something that's like really, really great. So the next topic for next week is going to be expectations. And this is something I've been waiting for for a long, long time because <laughs> expectations are the thing that will will let you down it's it's going to let you down in some way because even if we you know have expectations for an amazing day you know and that day turns out to be like super amazing if there was one hitch in like that that day then like that's something that we're going to notice it may not ruin the day in general but as we reflect on the day it was like yeah the day was perfect like this happened this happened oh yeah but then that like that dumb shit happened. And then like that, that was kind of stupid, but yeah, that didn't let like, but you remember it. And I think that as we build more expectations, that's like a very minuscule uh, example. But as we start building expectations in different situations and the more expectations we hold for different situations, I think the more we're allowing ourselves to be let down because the fact of the situation or the outcome of the situation doesn't match up with that expectation that we have in our mind, that idea that we've created and and put so much emotion and time and thought into that, you know, when it when it doesn't come to fruition, we are just kind of broken down by it. So expectations, that's going to be a big one. So I'm going to take down self-improvement, self-improvement development and put expectations on the wall. So so today we're talking about self-improvement and development. And I think that this is something that is so important. I think it's something that we're constantly doing, whether we're aware of it or not. But I think it's better when it's something that we're actively trying to move towards or actively recognizing it. And I mean, there's going to go there. I mean, I'm obviously going to go more into this, but again, like shoulds and shouldn'ts, I try to avoid them, although I do say them sometimes. But, you know, do it at your own pace. I just noticed that like, as I've begun to actively try to move towards the things that I want to develop within myself and improve within myself, I've realized that my actions are becoming more intentional as well. And I think that as we become, as we match our mindset to a certain state, our physical actions start to reflect in that same way. So as we start to begin intentions within our own minds, we begin to move intentionally as well. So For this, on this little piece of paper that I wrote down, I put uh, self-improvement slash development, and in parentheses, I put embracing the things that improve life, and I think that's so vague. Like, what what does it mean? Like, what does what does improving life mean? Like, what what does that improvement entail? And the first thing I I want to start off by saying is that what I define as self-improvement and development is not going to be the same for everyone. And that goes for you and, and your idea of self-improvement and development. And it's very individualistic. And although we may have a lot of overlap in certain ideals or the things that we want to go towards or things we want to build within ourselves, we have to also realize that there are, there are times that, you know, like we want specific things for ourselves that we can't really translate to other people's situations in different in different ways like that. So this is something so important because we find ourselves sometimes coming into contact with individuals that kind of like we butt heads with because they're, you know, they, they tell us, okay, this is the right way to improve yourselves. This is the right way to do this. And I think that as we move more towards people, you know, like accepting that people are telling us what's right and what's wrong, that's when we start falling into that idea of just like false ideations of yourself. It's like how, I mean, like the idea of, you know, what a perfect body looks like, what, you know, a person should do in their day-to-day life, what a person should do as far as just like their money and and their job and, and all these different things. Like everyone's going to have an opinion on the things you should do to improve your life in different ways. And, and that's okay for them, but it's not necessarily okay for you. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to knock anyone that, you know, tries to help others like motivational speakers and things like that. I, I adore motivational speakers, people that get up there and, you know, say like, yeah, like, you know, like there are going to be challenges, but you can do it essentially. Like, you know, given that you can do it attitude. And I think that's really amazing. But I think that there's also like something that we miss within that where it's like, 
they're saying you can do it, but they're also, they speak a lot about their own experiences as well. And I think that's something that we have to highlight when we go through these ideas of listening to other people and taking their feedback. It's like, you listen to their story and realize when those components work for them. And if you're on a similar path, and yeah, a lot of those components can work for you, but it doesn't mean that the way that you start doing things or the way you interpret your development as being right or wrong in any type of way, because it's it's right for you if it's right for you. And, and that's something that we have to kind of start de- deciphering for ourselves. And the biggest thing apart about this is that this is a lifelong process. The, the idea of developing ourselves and improving ourselves and, and becoming who we want to be, it's, it's a lifelong process. It's, it's going to happen constantly. We, we're constantly gaining new understandings of, of everything, even our understanding of development and improvement. It's like, you know, like what we feel as though it's like we can imagine now this idealistic goal of ourselves and the things that we want for ourselves. And then we get to that point and we're like, you know, actually, I think that this is the point that I want to get to. So we're constantly changing and and understanding new levels of what we want for ourselves. And with that, we have to also understand that that, again, that idea of self-improvement and development, that's going to change as well. And and that's something that we have to kind of hold on to because, again, like, I mean, this is going into ne- next week's topics, but expectations. I think that if we move towards that idea of kind of holding on to this expectation of this improvement or this goal of where you want to be is, you know, like if you're holding so much expectation of that being like the end all be all, then when you get to that point, you're going to be very disappointed to realize that, you know, you're not exactly where you want to be. And even if you have the things that you at one point wanted to surround yourself with and bring into your life you have to constantly keep moving towards that because again like situations change people change your your understanding changes and and with that we have to realize that the goals and the the movements toward developing ourselves are also going to change in that same light so it's so important to also understand that everything is part of it all these things that we're experiencing all the challenges that we experience in life all the the milestones that we reach in life, all the, you know, everything, the relationships that we encounter, all of them have to do with these things that we're dealing with. All the topics that I've spoken about deal with developing yourself in different types of ways, whether it's uh, understanding different passions that you have, understanding different things within your own mind, within your own body, different things that you want to move towards, different things that you want to be. And, And again, like with it being a lifelong process and with it being something that is constantly changing, these topics that I'm speaking about, these are things I'm still working on myself. And, you know, I I never want it to seem like I'm speaking about topics as if this is the way that it's supposed to be. This is the, this is the way that it is. And and that's not, that's not what I'm getting across at all. And there are times where I listen to my, like, listen to my podcast, whether it's for editing or otherwise that I am like, oh shit, like, wow. Yeah. I, I said some shit that I really need to listen to myself. And, and I think that's something that we all, find ourselves in at some point where it's like we find ourselves in this place where we start to reflect our on our own thoughts and realize that maybe we're not moving in a way that's that's in true accordance to what we want for ourselves and and that's something that I've recently had to discover with working out it's like I wanted my physical body to represent like the mental strength that I had as well but I wasn't doing anything active I wasn't doing anything to develop myself in that way you know I've changed my diet you know years ago to live a healthier life yet I wasn't physically doing that myself you know and and that's something that I've recently had to change and it's because it's a development that I've wanted for myself but after reflecting upon why I want that development and in the years that it's been in the making of creating that development I've realized that you know I've had to build some characteristics within myself to start working towards those goals and and that's something that's a big part of that and something i'm going to get into in a minute but another big part of this is we have to realize the role that other people play in our self-development and our growth because it's it's so critical to understand these things and and these are these are three categories of people that i made up i mean this isn't this wasn't anything that was offline or anything like that and again so these are just the categories that I've placed them in. You can place people in different categories or not place people in categories. And I don't mean to like categorize people, but more or less identify people in your life because as we identify the people in our life and the role that they play in our life, we can better start 
deciphering who we want in our life and, and how much of them we want in our life. So in this, I, I broke it down to three different categories. As we move towards self-development and improvement, there are these three different categories in my opinion. And I guess if I thought about it more, I could probably break it down into more categories. But I divided into these three categories, teachers, challengers, and allies slash companions. So teachers are the ones that we go to for specifically learning things, learning the things that we want for ourselves. So maybe you're going to a motivational speaker, maybe you're going to someone that's written a book about, you know, empowerment and improvement or whatever, like these are these are teachers that can be on a fundamental level where if you have to learn new skills or have new knowledge about something like, you know, educational teachers and things like that, these can be teachers on a spiritual level, if you're trying to gain understanding and spirituality in that way. And, and they're different teachers for different things that we pursue. And Although all the experiences that we have in life are learning experiences, teachers are the ones that are that we actively go towards. That we we're not learning through you know some coincidence of experience that's combined with uh, intrinsic thought. We're going to these people to learn these things and to to build ourselves in that specific way, and that's what they're there for to reap that knowledge from. The challengers are the individuals that are challenging your development or your resolve to do those things and i and i say that challengers in a very light way where it's like maybe they're not you know they're like i know what you want and i'm just gonna fuck you up you know or like fuck you over in some kind of way but no it's not they're not necessarily doing that but it's kind of just like those random people that come into your life that will just challenge that patience that you've been working on or challenge that sense of trust that you've been working on or that that love for yourself that you've been working on they they challenge that they push you to maybe think certain things or feel certain things that that may go against that that resolve that you have to improve yourself in that way to build yourself in that way and and that's when we have to recognize this is someone that's just testing me this is life giving me a test that's like do i want to continue is, is my strength and my resolve to accomplish this improvement for myself, is that going to be hindered by this other person? And I think as we recognize that this is a challenge that we're facing and is this going to compromise what I want for myself, we build a stronger relationship with that thing that we're trying to build for ourselves, with that development that we're trying to instill within ourselves and help us to grow. So these challengers, again, they're not like intentional. I mean, they can be intentional sometimes. We share things with people that we shouldn't share them with because they will take that knowledge and they'll manipulate it and they'll try to manipulate us because they know that we're trying to move in a certain direction. So recognize the challengers in your life and and if you divulge too much information to them, cut that out. You know, I mean, I guess do what you want, but if you realize the more information you give them, the more they utilize that information against you, that's when, you know, like you're giving them the power essentially. And again, like, Challengers are necessary. So whether you actively remove them from your life or not, we're going to come across challengers and challenges in our lives to on this process of self-development and improvement. So they're they're absolutely necessary because how do we know that we've reached that point of patience? How do we know that we've reached that point of understanding in whatever it is if we don't have someone that's challenging us? So it's like, oh shit, I thought I didn't get pissed off at that anymore, but this person somehow got under my skin and, and made that happen. So those challenges are necessary because they help us to realize the parts of us that we want to develop, but you know maybe we haven't given it enough strength to. So those challenges are necessary and, and they're they're part of they they are, they play a vital role in that process of self improvement and development. And the last category is allies and companions, allies slash companions. And these are people that help you through through your development. And they're the ones that are also maybe helping to or like working to improve with you. You know, like they're the ones standing by you. They're the ones that are supporting you. They're the ones that are giving that support. And I separate this different from teachers because they're not necessarily individuals that maybe we're learning from, but individuals that we choose to surround ourselves with. And I think as we start developing ourselves more, and as we start understanding the things we want for ourselves, we start, again, shedding away the people that are, you know, that we know are challengers that we don't need in our lives. And we start surrounding ourselves with allies and companions and people that are going to walk this path with us. And and although we may split into different paths and go into different directions at some point, these are the people that are walking with us and moving with us as we're going 
on this journey and and supporting us even if they don't understand exactly what we're what we're going through so these are these are again like these are just like the three categories that i've placed people in and you know maybe they're different from you and again like as i said the very first thing what i define as self-improvement slash development isn't the same thing that's going to be for you you know it's going to be very different for every person and and these these three categories of people may not even be relevant for for what you understand but it is something that is it's again it's they're they're part of that role and i i feel as though as i've developed myself and as i've gone through my experiences these are as i thought about just like breaking it down into this these are the categories that kind of came to mind in a very clear way and made sense to me as i as i kind of created them in that way so as we think about everything being part of it and everyone being a part of it essentially then you know like that's that's kind of where we have a little bit more understanding of okay how am I moving intentionally towards this? Am I intentionally moving towards those teachers and shying away from those challenges or building my resolve from those challenges those challenges that we experience this? Or am I not recognizing something else that I want for myself? And I think that's kind of where the true essence of improvement and development come from. It comes from that it comes from the things that we want for ourselves. It comes from the things that we seek to have for ourselves, the goals that we want for ourselves, whether it's to, you know, have a certain position at a job or have something for ourselves on it, like, you know, like me with, you know, like wanting my body to look a certain way. It's like we all have different things that we want for ourselves and, and different goals that we have for ourselves. And, and that's kind of where self-development comes from or like that's where it begins in a way for, in again, in my opinion, because, you know, if you think about like, you know, what are you striving for? in this moment, like it doesn't have to be like in general and in life, but what are you striving for in this moment? And, and as you think about that goal, think about the components that go within that. And, and something that I, I kind of wrote down again was the goals within goals is something that we have to recognize. And goals between the goals is, is something that I think is like so critical to achieving those goals in themselves, because I, the goals within the goals, they're like the components, they're like the foundation that get us to that place so whether it's patience whether it's strength whether it's clarity whether it's wisdom or peace like these are qualities that we want within ourselves but we don't want them for no reason we want them because they are the things the qualities that help us to manifest the things that we want for ourselves into our actual life and and those are the things that we have to start working on those are well i said have to but these are the things that we can be working on because again these are the things that we work to improve so that we can start moving towards those goals that we have for ourselves and and that's something so critical because again how do we reach those goals if we don't have strength and perseverance if we don't have the patience to deal with other people if we don't have the communication skills to to work with other people these are all different components and when i say that everything in life has to deal with self-improvement and development this is what i mean you know the the way that you react to those challengers the way that you seek teachers a big thing for me is that like i am someone that does not like to ask for help i don't i don't like to you know i feel as though i am a very capable person i am a very knowledgeable person i can learn things on my own and i feel as though like i i why well, I, I used to always feel as though like i don't need anyone necessarily to improve myself and that was false and And I want to like teeter totter on that a little bit because at the same time that I say I don't need anyone, um, or same time I same time I say I do need someone, like other people, in order for that improvement development, we also shouldn't rely on other people for that improvement development. So it's kind of like a balance between what we actually need for ourselves in order to improve, and also how much we're depending on other people for that improvement because that's kind of where we kind of fall out of fault. Because how can we truly improve ourselves from within if our improvement is contingent upon anyone from outside of us? So when we go to teachers, when we go to those individuals to help us to learn, that is an intentional move. You know, like we move with intention to get those teachers in our lives, whether it's we go to take some class to certify ourselves in something or go to some school to get an education in something or go to a spiritual leader or a shaman or something and and learn some new things about yourself and about life and when we go to those people that's an intentional move but 
when we rely too much on relying on others for that improvement and development, then we're not only looking for teachers, we're not intentionally moving at all. We're kind of just moving along with how other people move us. And that's kind of where it comes to that point. So I was at odds with asking for help, but I've realized that help is necessary. You know, sometimes learning something that you don't know is necessary, you know, and and I think that even without realizing it, we seek teachers, whether it's seeking a parent for guidance or seeking a pastor or someone in your church or someone, you know, that you know, that you feel comfortable with, that you feel like, you know, can give you some kind of advice in some kind of way. These are teachers in different ways, whether it's like a teacher in this specific lesson, a teacher in this, you know, situation that I'm trying to get through, whatever it is, we we do seek out teachers in different ways. But as we want to develop ourselves to that next level and move ourselves to that next tier, we have to seek those teachers that are going to bring us to that next level. And again, like that's something that's very intentional. But again, like relying too much on other people can be a downfall and can be something that doesn't really allow us to get to where we want to go because again we're being moved like a pawn on a chessboard and and that's not exactly where we want to go so as we think about this idea of self-improvement and development think about it for yourself think about what does it mean for yourself and and what are the goals that you want for yourself and it doesn't again it doesn't have to be lifelong goals it, you don't have to create a five-year plan you know and it, it's not something that's that necessary it can be you know what do you want to do today how do you want to start today? And and that's where everything starts. It starts with just what do you want in this very moment? And and that builds upon itself as we get to understand ourselves, as we understand the strengths that we have in ourselves, as we understand just different things within ourselves. I mean, the realization that it's okay to ask for help, that realization blew my mind and opened up so many different doors and, and possibilities for me, although I'm still very reluctant to ask for help until it's very necessary. I I still know that that's an option and I've started moving towards trying to seek out those people that may provide those answers for me, but I have to get the questions first. And that's where that's where it starts at, you know? It's like what are the questions and the questions involve our goals and involves the things that we want to move towards. So start by recognizing the goals that you want for yourselves and then recognize the goals between those goals what are the what are the key components that are going to build that for me if you want to start a business for yourself what are the components that that go into starting a business you know of course there are financial things you know there there are the very like topographic things but what are the things within yourself you know because this is about self-improvement and self-development these things within yourself and those things within yourself start acting externally but it starts within yourself. So what are the things within yourself that, that that goes into building a business for yourself? Confidence, strength, perseverance. These are the goals between the goals. These are the things that we may just overlook as we're going through this. And, and we may break down because of these failures or we may break down because someone says, oh, you shouldn't do that. But again, like our, that's a challenger. That's just someone that's challenging that dream that you have, that thing that you want to achieve. So recognize that, recognize the goals between the goals. And if that challenger is getting you down, is is challenging your resolve, then maybe resolve is a goal between the goal. Maybe just strengthen your resolve in, in the thing that you're passionate about. Strengthen your love for the thing that you're passionate about and the thing that you want to pursue. These are the goals between the goals. These are the foundation, the building blocks that help us to achieve those goals and and manifest that person within us that we know that we are, that all the things that we know that we can do, all the accomplishments we know that we can achieve, all that is within us. And we strive towards it constantly and we get let down because we know that we we can do more and we we are so much more. So start moving towards that. But again, you have to know the questions before you can get those answers. You have to ask yourself those things before you can start moving towards them. You have to realize them before you can start improving on them. And that's what this is all about. So that is this whole idea of you know self-improvement and development. And again, as I kind of close out with this, I do want to again say that like this is different for everyone. And just recognize that for yourself. And, and as you recognize it's different for you, recognize it's different for someone else. And we constantly want to say, you should do this and you shouldn't do that. And you should 
do this this way and we find ourselves doing that and it's you know it's it's not something that we can next necessarily apply to everyone and I think as we understand the dynamics and the diversity within our own minds and within our own person, we become more compassionate towards the experiences of others and the goals that other people want to achieve. So maybe at one point we were a challenger because we didn't recognize, you know, the fact that someone else wanted to achieve something different than differently than like how we wanted to achieve it. So we were a challenger in that situation. But as we grow to understand ourselves more as we grow to realize that our goals are our goals and the way that we achieve them are the way we achieve them and it doesn't apply to everyone else as we start recognizing that we can have more compassion and realize that I no longer want to be a challenger in someone else's life I want to be a supporter I want to be an ally we're we're going towards different things but I can support you and you know like you support me but you know again don't depend on that support coming back to you but that's another thing in itself. So that goes into expectations. Yeah. So if you give something out, if you if you are an ally or companion and you expect to get that back, then you might be let down. So again, do those things because you want to do it. Maybe it's part of your self-improvement uh, and understanding and you want to become more inspirational. You want to do all these different things. But anyway, I think I'm kind of rambling at this point. So that's self-improvement and development. And I, I hope this was was something somewhat insightful this is a shorter episode than usual so there's that but yeah I I think I think that was the gist of it that's all I kind of got for this subject on this topic so give me your thoughts if you want to send some topics in you can send them to everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com or you can send your ideas or your thoughts or feelings about everything spoken about here or in the past you can join the Facebook page at Everything Under the Sun with Ty on Facebook, like I said, or you can go to Instagram, everything.sunpodcast, or you can go to Twitter at Every Sun Podcast. And that's that's all I got. Again, hope you all are doing well. Try to, you know, try to take care of yourselves because the world is crazy right now. There's a lot of transformation happening within all of us and within the systems that we're having in that's just kind of hope for the best as we go into the rest of this year. I mean, we're halfway through the year right now, and it seems like it's been so long. It seems like it's been a year already, and also not. So we're halfway through it. I can't imagine what the next six months are going to hold because the last six months have been just ridiculous. So take care of yourselves. Work on yourselves if you want to, or you know, watch some Netflix because, again, that's helping yourself. And you know, sometimes we need distractions in our lives. Sometimes we need things to keep us from going a little crazy or falling too far into a certain emotion. So take the time you need. Do the things that you need for yourself. Know that it's individual, individualistic. Know that it's like for you. And yeah, listen to yourself. <laughs> so anyway, that's all I got. Love you all. And I will see you next time.